Okay. Make sure I hit these glider elbows. Yeah, man. Public police have arrested a man who they say killed a member Much of a better. motorcycle gang. 46-year-old Patrick Alvarado was charged with shooting and killing Philip Kintel outside a downtown bar in January 2020. Police had interviewed Alvarado after the shooting, but he claims he shot Kintel in self-defense. APD says an investigator with experience in APD's gang unit was assigned to the case and helped detectives link Alvarado to the murder. Alvarado was arrested yesterday evening in the North Valley. Wow. Glider on glider gang violence? Uh-oh. It's a whole different world down here, man. Meth is a motherfucker. Meth I don't Americans. think that's meth. That's, that's two gliders just shooting. That ain't got shit to do with meth. That guy's a biker, man. That guy's a meth dealer, probably. Um. Okay, let's see this one. Good afternoon. The man accused in a deadly road rage shooting in 2021 near Old Town will spend the next four years in prison after taking a plea deal this morning. Joshua Butler is accused of killing Nelson Gallegos in October 2021. Witnesses say that Gallegos, who was taking his grandson to school, stopped his minivan, got out, and threw a piece of drywall at Butler's tr uh, pickup. Now, that's when Butler opened fire. Now, today, Butler pled no contest to voluntary manslaughter. Under the, under the deal, the state agreed to drop all the other charges wow. in the case. As per the agreed upon sentence in the plea deal, Judge Joseph Montano sentenced Butler to four years in prison. Four years in prison for blowing a guy's head off because he threw a piece of drywall at your car. Mm. Hey, man. <laughs> I should move. Right. Uh-oh. What do we got? Carjackers? Oh, Cookie Police say... OnStar helped them disable a vehicle that had been carjacked. They say last night around 1030, they responded to a carjacking in a parking lot along Unser near Central. They say the victim told them that two men walked up to her. One pulled out a gun and demanded her keys. Officers were able to track the vehicle with OnStar. And when it came to a stop just after midnight, OnStar was, dis was able to disable that car remotely. Four people tried to flee the area. They were caught. 18-year-old Daniel Flores was charged with armed robbery and aggravated assault. APD says they're looking at potential federal charges because Flores had a violent criminal history as a juvenile. Where's Wicked at, man? Where's Wicked? Yeah. I love this, though. On stuff, he cut the car off. Yeah, that's fighting back right there, man. All cars need to be equipped with that technology. Man. They did that a few years ago down in Fort Collins, Colorado. There was a bank robbery. And they just shut the car off and locked them in it until the cops got to the car. Kind of funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I like this, though. I like that. I like that a lot. I agree. I that's, a lot. that's a great idea. That's one of the best ideas they can actually do, really. Exactly. Roswell police are looking for a suspect. They say shot at a home with kids inside. Justino Martinez is accused of shooting just before 3.30 Tuesday morning at a home on East 5th Street. Police say three kids from two years of age to eight years old were in the home. They say numerous bullet holes were found in the house, but no one was injured. Police arrested a 16-year-old who they say was the driver. Martinez and the juvenile are also under investigation for other drive-by shootings. Wow. I bet he shot that house up because that's where his barber lived. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, damn. Oh, you tell us out here wilding. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. They are fucking... Is off the chain. An arrest warrant has been issued for an Albuquerque man, man accused of taking off his She's baby hot. monitor and disappearing. 29-year-old Jordan Baca was sentenced to a community custody program back in December after pleading guilty to criminal damage to property and possession of a controlled substance. But according to a criminal complaint, late Matt last American. month, Baca failed to show up for his mandatory urine analysis. And shortly after investigators learned, he had also removed his ankle monitor. An officer responded to his last known location just outside sheriff's office at 4th and Roma. 
Deputies in the front office told investigators an unknown woman walked in and returned all of the equipment issued to Baca. Baca is now charged with escape from a community custody release program. The search of online records shows his criminal history dates back to 2011. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, at, at least Kong. he didn't lose the deposit. I mean, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Honky Kong, man. Um, I forgot about that story. I meant to do that story. I had forgotten about it. Thank you for reminding me, though. I'm gonna do that story. Uh, we're gonna do what, we're gonna do that story next. Uh, yeah, salute to um, Albuquerque, though, man. Albuquerque is we might have to come to Albuquerque more often, man. This this is a um, it's a little bit of a gem. Yeah, man. Like wow, man. Gliders. It's it's, it's refreshing to to not see sun men on every fucking story. It's well, just, they know how to party down there. I was just say you got to click on that guy, man. The father of a child who disappeared for hours, triggering an Amber Alert, will stay behind bars until trial. Trial after he allegedly attacked an officer, Nicholas Clinton was charged with assault on a peace officer. Oh, that's a Prairie Patel, man. That's a whole Prairie Patel. <laughs> Dances with wolves. Charged with assault on a peace officer after his interaction with police while they were looking for Oriana Campbell. Today, prosecutors laid out their case for keeping him behind bars, saying he had been violent against Campbell's mother multiple times and that if released, he would not comply with the court's orders. One, he doesn't like to appear in court. He doesn't like to comply with pretrial services. He doesn't like to comply with court orders. He picks up new charges. He's picking up charges where his daughter is involved. This is not the first time in this defendant's history that OC is involved in something where he is hurting his mom or she's being basically lost by her father. Clinton's trial is set for March 15th. Wow, she railed on that. I'm a little pissed off that that girl's mustache was thicker than mine. Wow. Damn. <laughs> wow. That man is somebody's the father. First of the yeah. And, and he like active in the child's life. <laughs> Yikes. The first of the cinnamon tree apartments near central and Louisiana. Details are limited at this hour, but that person was found dead at the complex. The second homicide happened on Carlton Street near 2nd and Manal. Officers were sent to the home after reports of a man who was possibly dead. They say he was dead, and they're tracking a third homicide right now at the Love's truck stop on 6th Street. This is just off of I-40. They, they say a person was found dead with an apparent gunshot wound there. We will continue to update you on air and, of course, online. Damn, Albuquerque. Hey. Albuquerque is on fire. Shit. The man charged in a road rage incident near UNM appeared in court today. Police say 18-year-old Andres Martinez got upset at another driver on MLK, threatened to, quote, jack his car and hit him with a gun. He's charged with aggravated battery and attempted robbery. Prosecutors are asking Martinez be locked up until trial and will remain in custody until a judge rules on that motion. MLK, they have a Martin Luther King Boulevard down there in Albuquerque. Albuquerque is wow. Wow. I told you. Wow, these people are, these people are, uh oh, uh oh, what we got here? Um, Albuquerque police arrested two suspects for a deadly shooting yesterday morning, and police say they have connected the pair to another murder back in October. Albuquerque police were called to Candelaria near I-25 around 4 yesterday morning to reports of a person in the road. APD says it appears a man was shot from behind and then crawled into the street where he was struck by a car. An investigation, along with surveillance video, led police to 22-year-old Casper Rickards and 33-year-old Melvin Robinson, who were arrested last night at a motel off Manal in Princeton. Police recognized the pair as suspects from a separate homicide at the Albuquerque Transit Center back in October. During questioning, 
Rickards and Robinson told police they attempted to sell Isaac Torres marijuana and a gun when a confrontation broke out and they shot him. The investigation into Monday's shooting is ongoing. Police say surveillance video shows a man believed to be Robinson hit the victim with a long pole. That same man and a second man to believe to be Rickards then appear to shoot the victim. Both men have been charged in the October shooting. They are not currently charged in the, the second killing. All right, now that's the difference. This is how we roll. We, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we, we take it to Detroit style stories and fucking walk An investigation <laughs> along with surveillance. Video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Casper, the friendly ghost, and his buddy. Yeah, yeah we, we, <laughs> we, we step, we step it up a little bit when we get involved. It just be more interesting. You know what I'm saying? It does. It gets a little more action packed. I must admit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, this is, it's like, this is how you do it. It's like, stand back, son. We got this. We'll show you. We'll show you. It, this is how you do it. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is the blueprint, man. You really, you got to kill multiple people on multiple occasions. You got to use a pole, a gun. You know what I'm saying? You, you beat the dude with the pole, then shoot him. Shoot the other guy. He crawls in the traffic. Gets hit by a car. Yeah, man. Um, salute to Albuquerque, though. Know, y'all, y'all, y'all trying, man. You just need. You just don't have enough of us down there yet. But it looks like you may be getting there, man. We don't. We're not. We don't, the some men don't population don't grow in New Mexico. Yeah, it's, it's 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 it's. I think people coming to Phoenix. A lot of them are coming to Arizona, but yeah, New Mexico is is kind of um stagnant. The man accused of stealing a police bait car and shooting at officers will stay locked up until trial. Police arrested Christian Wood last Thursday, roughly two weeks after investigators say he stole the bait car near Gibson and Yale. Detectives tracked Woods down to an area near Copper and San Mateo. When they say he fired a shot at them, no one was hurt, but prosecutors argued that he should stay locked up until trial, pointing to a lengthy... Yeah, no shit. If he fucking stole a bait car and then shot at the cops, why is they? Why do they even have to argue that? Like, you shouldn't even have to make a plea to the judge for that. You shot at the cops. You not get no bail. Period. They should have been able to just arrest him, take him straight downtown, and cane his ass in front of everybody. Definitely, man. It makes you too... Computers argued that he should stay locked up until trial, pointing to a lengthy criminal history. Uh, the criminal history here is, is pretty extensive. We have, obviously, a, a repeat and frequent uh, uh, auto thief uh, who has committed offenses throughout the city and throughout his pretty young life uh, with unlawful takings beginning in March of 15. Woods' defense argued that he should be released from custody, saying his criminal history involved property crimes, not violent crimes. Judge Brett, Judge Brett Loveless sided with the state in this case, ordering him held until trial. Wow. Um what the hell could you do, man? Um, <laughs> There's been a mistrial for the woman accused Smash of again. the sexual abuse of a teen yeah. and posting it online. She recorded the sexual abuse of a teen and posted it online. Abuse of a teen and posting it online. Yarelles Espedes is charged with manufacturing and distributing child porn after investigators say she captured video of a man assaulting the 13-year-old in the back of an SUV in 2018. The trial was scheduled to begin yesterday, but the district attorney's office says the judge declared a mistrial over concerns some test might be prejudicial against Cespedes. Prosecutors expect to retry the case as soon as possible. Wow. Okay. 
Good afternoon. A small high school community is grieving once again as three teenagers are dead from what appears to be carbon monoxide poisoning. Edgewood police say a friend of the three Moriarty High School students found them unresponsive yesterday morning. News 13's George Gonzalez spoke with one of the victim's family. He joins us live at Moriarty High School with the story. George. Mm, that's sad, man. That's very sad, man. Um, that's very, very sad. Neighbors are afraid to step outside and they can't even enjoy their own backyards, all because of one woman who they say is wreaking havoc in their neighborhood. KRQE investigative reporter Gabrielle Burkhardt took their concerns and their evidence to city leaders and law enforcement. Yelling racial slurs at a grocery delivery driver. Shouting threats at neighbors out on a walk. Even spraying her next door neighbors and their home surveillance cameras with a hose while they're outside barbecuing in their own backyard. Now you You pay your water bill. Just keep the water on your front. Home surveillance footage shared with KRQE investigates captures what neighbors describe as constant harassment by one woman on the block. You don't feel safe completely in your own home. Right. Lexi Hernandez owns the home next door to the problem neighbor. Every time we come home, something like that would happen. Hernandez showed us surveillance footage from their backyard, a glimpse of what she and her wife say they've been dealing with for months. I feel she definitely needs the help. Our community, our little neighborhood needs the help as well. The harassment, she says, is unprovoked, and Hernandez believes her neighbor suffers from mental health issues. One reason we're not naming her, but it's not just the woman's next door neighbors who've been the target of her attacks on this block near Ladera Golf Course. When somebody comes out of their house screaming and yelling at you, trying to wet you with the hose, saying vulgar, vulgar things that I can't say out of my mouth, spitting on old people, walking a dog, um, starting fires. Betty Koga lives down the street and was asked last year to be the neighborhood block captain. I asked him, well, what does a block captain do? And I don't know, bit nothing. He's sitting at emails, basically. And I said, hey, I can do that. I'm retired. But I have to tell you, this has been the most consuming thing I've ever done in my life. That's because all of her neighbors now go to her about encounters with the problem neighbor. In an effort to get the woman and her neighbors some help, Kogut tries to document each incident and shares concerns with their local Albuquerque police area commander. The police have been here so many times. They do come when we call. She won't let them in. And that's the other problem. Records show Albuquerque police have responded to this home more than 50 times last year. But in most cases, no one answers the door and the police do have to leave. So she has these outbursts and then she runs into her home whenever they come. What would you like to see happen? I mean, something because there has been nothing. Most recently, the problem neighbor was charged with assault for reportedly throwing baseball-sized rocks at women out walking their dogs. Neighbors also filed a temporary restraining order against her. Albuquerque oh, police like wouldn't interview with us on camera about this specific case, but we do know it's crisis intervention officers have responded. Is it popping? Yeah, huh? it, it's popping. Damn. That, that Karen is, yo... <laughs> she she wants some attention, man. She wants her neighbors to come over and drink wine with her, man. They they don't want to have nothing to do with her. That's all. She's the female George Zimmerman. <laughs> oh yeah, that lady. Yeah. <clears throat> the crazy lady, though, man. I guarantee one of them neighbors goes over there with some wine, just talks with her. She'll chill out. I promise. <laughs> no, I think you're right. Not for nothing, though. It's like she's next level, Karen. Like she's brave. I mean, <laughs> next she step. 
They could they could mop her ass though, you know, go lynch her real quick, beat her ass. She'll yeah. just she'll stop. She she she's done a lot, man. Like this just she, she Y'all need more sons down there, man. To the woman's home multiple times. How's my son? He sent us a statement saying in part It's popping still. Needs more mental health. Neighbors are afraid to step outside, and they can't even enjoy their own backyards, all because of one woman. Still? Who they... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. What the fuck? Um, hey, let me see. Let me see something there. Oh. Let me see something. 